is our flexible automation engine with strong capabilities around SRE. Over the next few minutes, I want to walk you through how AMP supports the main tenets of SRE around contextualised workload monitoring of service levels, auto-remediating whole categories of problems to improve MTTR, and automating repetitive tasks to reduce our toil. We'll begin in the dashboard view. This summarises the state of all the running workloads to high-level stakeholders such as product owners. This is where we surface relevant information about workload health and compliance, which can include key SLIs and status against SLOs, all of which is central to SRE because we can't manage or improve what we can't see. And right now, we know at a glance that our estate is healthy and that all services are in compliance with the defined objectives. In the case of this particular workload, we're highlighting web latency and error rate as our key SLIs with attached SLOs that are currently met, as you can see. What's surfaced on the dashboard is just part of a richer set of information held within AMP's runtime models of the running services. Reliability engineers and app developers may wish to dig deeper into the structure and state of the workload, which they can do via the inspector. Here we can see raw data about each of the components of the system. For instance, the Tomcat nodes we were looking at in the dashboard, we can now see a very rich set of information, including the latency information that represents our service level indicators. AMP is able to acquire these metrics directly by interacting with the component itself or indirectly via whatever additional monitoring solutions might be in place. And AMP contextualizes all that information through knowledge of the workload structure, as we see here. We'll come back to how we represent that knowledge uh, in just a little while. Now, this particular app happens to contain a bug that uh, will cause one of our key SLIs to deteriorate and threaten the corresponding SLO. And I can artificially trigger that um, off screen. Um, I'm going to inject a fault condition that will cause our latency to start to spike. So if I switch back to the dashboard, we can see now our latency is starting to trend up on one of the Tomcat nodes. And eventually, we should see this now triggers our, it now is in violation of our service level objective. And in near real time, the dashboard has alerted us to this, to this fact. So our summary and our detail views are remaining up to date with the system itself. Now at this point, our on-call engineer uh, might reach for the run book, which may suggest a manual remediation. We may have to remotely log into the server in question and restart the Java virtual machine. But in the spirit of SRE, our, our reliability engineer recognizes that doing this manually is simply toil, and instead we'll automate this through AMP's workflows. So we can jump to the we can jump to the component in question in the inspector and here we can see yes our latency has spiked this is the this is the relevant server that we need to fix and although we could run workflows directly from within amp we can run ad hoc workflows uh, directly in the console here without having to remotely log into machines we can further reduce toil by attaching workflows to entities directly and we call these effectors so rather than logging into the server and restarting the Java process, we can surface these uh, operations actions that are contextualized to the level of the service component and easy to find and to invoke. So I can go ahead and restart the process here and we should find, if we come back to the dashboard in just a second, we can see AMP taking the necessary steps to stop that Java process. Once it's stopped, it will then restart it. Um, we could have done additional remediations like uh, changing the JVM config to increase the amount of memory if that had been the problem. But in this instance, we simply stopped it and restarted it. And we can see when we return to the dashboard, our average latency is starting to come down. And we can see eventually by restarting the process, we have restored that service level indicator to be within our objectives. Now we can go beyond this and we can even use AMP's autonomic policies to create truly autonomous systems. So we could in fact attach, in this instance I've done so here, we can attach 
the simple policy uh, that will invoke that restart operation whenever our, S our service level objective is breached. Um, so if I now reintroduce that, um, that problem over here on this server, I'm going to again cause the latency to spike. And we should see um, AMP is continually assessing the state of the latency of this component. And as the latency starts to trend up, eventually, like before, it will breach our threshold. It will breach our SLO, as it's done here. And without requiring any input from me, AMP's autonomic policy is taking the relevant steps to invoke that, that runbook defined process of, of turning it off and back on again in this case. But we can see now there's been no human effort involved. There's been no reference to the runbook. There's been no need to page an on-call engineer. The system healed itself. So this is further reduced toil by closing the loop between detecting a problem and invoking the correct response. It gets more interesting when uh, we define workflows, AMP workflows that coordinate activities across multiple components of the system. So canary deployments or blue green updates all require coordinating multiple pieces of the stack at various times and AMP's workflows are very adept to, to dealing with that. So I said we would return to how AMP expresses all this knowledge, and it begins with a blueprint. Uh, we can act interactively build blueprints here in the composer. Um, the blueprints capture the structure, the interdependencies, uh, the locations where uh, service components are running, and also the behavior in terms of those policies. Blueprints can incorporate other technologies and artifacts that may already exist. Uh, Terraform descriptions or cloud formation, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Salt, configuration management tools, um, or even homegrown scripts in Bash or PowerShell can all form part of the system description within AMP if they already exist. AMP's goal is to capture everything as code. And as part of that, policies form part of the same coherent model. And we can support event triggered actions, which we've already seen for auto remediation. We can also run schedule actions, which we see here. Um, these can alleviate some of the toil associated with routine maintenance tasks. And there are also specific policies that offer integrations with, with other relevant enterprise systems, such as maybe updating the, the CMDB in response to infrastructure changes or raising incident tickets in your ITSM system when problems are detected and then resolving those tickets automatically when AMP has taken the necessary remediative actions. So AMP records all of this composable knowledge at the level of individual components and also at the level of architectural patterns. So we can really start to apply broader autonomics patterns around resilience in, in the round. So we can create self-healing at the level of individual components or tiers, but we can also allow failures uh, and responses to failures to escalate all the way up to automating DR processes across data centers or across, across cloud regions or even between different cloud providers. So we can increase our mean time between failure. We can lengthen that by ensuring that small component failures don't cascade to become system outages. And our mean time to repair obviously improves massively through automation, both of which contribute to, to really healthy service uptime. I want to pause and offer a brief nod towards chaos engineering, where I think AMP can serve two roles. Firstly, as a remediation agent, which we've already seen, and we can extend our models with additional policies that describe relevant auto remediation steps for whole categories of failures that may be injected by the chaos army. Or alternatively, AMP could even be a chaos agent where it would coordinate various tools to inject failures and also validate the system's responses to them. That concludes my, my brief few minute tour of CloudSoft AMP and I'll wrap up by noting that we, we've barely scratched the surface of what this tool can do, but we've hopefully shown how it supports the essential pillars of SRE through contextualizing observability of health status and service levels, permitting user-defined automation workflows in response to toil, also contextualized additional auto-remediation workflows which can help reduce our mean time to repair, 
and all of that is represented as composable building blocks that can be curated and shared among SRE stakeholders within the organisation. And we do so in a way that integrates with culture and tooling and adapts well to chaos engineering. Thank you.